So as many of you know, I've been working on a level editor for my non-Euclidean ray tracer. And essentially how this works is there are two separate programs, the game engine itself and the level editor. And the level editor has its, is a completely separate program written in Python, and it has its own rendering, uh, rendering engine. Uh, it actually uses regular rasterization instead of ray tracing. And what it does is when you save your scene, it'll export as an XML file, which is then read in by the game engine that'll actually draw the non-Euclidean stuff. So uh, it's pretty simple to use, and I'm just going to go over some of the features. So uh, you hold down the right mouse button uh, in order to look around, and while you move the mouse, uh, the camera looks around. And while the right mouse button is held, you can use the WAS and D keys to move around, just like in any first-person movement system. So uh, once that's done, you can actually add in objects by going over here to the Add menu. Uh, in this case, I'll just add a plane. You can see it appears on the tree view, and I can actually select it either by clicking on it on it in the 3D view or here in the in the tree view. And uh, once an object is selected, a list of all of its properties comes up. You can make it um, a, uh, you can change the name of the object. You can make it uniform, which I'll go into, uh, which I won't explain in this video because it takes some time. But uh, you can. Uh, change the normal of the plane, which direction it's facing, whether or not it receives shadows, and the reflectivity. So uh, I'll go ahead and add a box here. Um, a quick note about selecting multiple objects, you can actually, uh, if you hold shift, you can select multiple objects, and then the move tool goes, or this widget goes to the center of both. But, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that you actually use this move tool. Once you select an object, a move tool will appear, uh, and you can um, move around the object just by clicking and dragging on the different axes. Now uh, a quick thing is that you can't actually move planes for a uh, specific reason, which is how they're defined, but you can move uh, any other object. So uh, suppose I actually want to use this um, s uh, cube and make a hallway. One of the things I can do is actually go to edit mode, which I can do by hitting E. And what it does is you can only have one object at a time in edit mode, but essentially uh, it, put, it sing singles this object out and gives you key points for which to manipulate. So in this case I'll drag this out over here. This is good as like maybe one wall of a hallway. And uh, what I can do here is I can actually hit the space bar. And what that does is it creates a duplicate. So instead of having to create a new cube and resize it, I can just duplicate that uh, cube to create the other wall. I can duplicate it again and uh, so that bring it up and go to edit mode. Actually, it looks like I may have. You want to make sure that like um, it's solid, because otherwise that means the because uh, the program expects a minimum and a maximum. But sometimes, if the if the coordinates of the maximum are less, then you'll actually get a cube that's drawn inward, where the normals of the cube are flipped. And now I can actually run this in the game engine just by going into the run menu, hitting run test. And you can see the tunnel perfectly made in the uh, in the actual game running. So now I'll just uh, show off some of the non-Euclidean parts. You can go in and add a box aberration. And this is like like in the previous video, uh, the aberration is a region of space in which rays that enter in are distorted in a certain way. So what I can actually do is cover the entrance to the hallway with this. And you can see nothing has changed because what did I forget to do? Uh, I did not change the scale of the rays. You actually set the value of what you want the rays to change by. In this case, it's along the x-axis. So what I'll do is I'll make it like 10 or something. What this will do is like when the rays go in, they get stretched to a factor of 10 along the x-axis. And you can see that it is shorter to travel through than to go around because the rays are stretched. So, uh, there's actually going to be a major rewrite to how this whole thing is handled, uh, and not only should that bring performance improvements, but also allow even crazier uh, non-Euclidean stuff, so that's definitely coming. Um, that's something to look forward to, but this box aberration stuff will still apply and still work. 
And also, of course, um, you can see spheres. Uh, I'm just get over here. Let's make it 100% reflectable. There it is. You can see the object over there. Um, make it only like one, two. Uh, so you can also add a portal. In this case, it's actually two spheres. The sphere portal. Uh, I didn't include the box portal in this version because there's actually going to be a, a total rewrite to how portals are handled because there are actually a lot of bugs and you'll see them if you just play around with them a bit. But, uh. And there are those portals. Also, a quick um, point on how to edit spheres. Uh, the way spheres, you, you can edit them by, uh, there's a center, and um, each of these spheres is a center, even this one is a center um, point, and then a uh, other point that's used to help define the radius, so you can take that out to scale the sphere. When you run it, it will be scaled up. So, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, of course, you can uh, go in and you can save it to. Uh, uh, you can save the file into an XML uh, and load it up later. You can, um, let me just open up a previous scene that I had. So all that works and um, hopefully is bug-free. Uh, yeah, you can just um, uh, save and load scenes. So my hope is that uh, who, uh, you guys who I send the level editor to will be able to create something cool with uh, the tools that are available. Hopefully as they add more tools, we'll be able to define like an actual gameplay mechanic. Because right now there isn't really a game, it's more of just like, oh, this is a technical demonstration. So uh, one of the ideas might be the actual moving of aberrations. Uh, like if there's a gap that's too large to jump across, then you can uh, place an aberration ac across the gap that uh, stretches out rays in that direction. So uh, you can just easily jump over the um, gap. So that's just one of the interesting ideas and hope you guys will be able to test out some interesting stuff. Uh, the portals are coming. There will be a complete rewrite to how they work. So that's why I didn't include the box portal. And those are probably going to be very important uh, in the final product. So definitely look forward to that. So yeah, this is just a quick demonstration and I hope you guys will be able to do something cool with this tool.